Darren Bishop, who's one of the great leaders within our program. Been different times during our evolution and time as a program where we have the ups and we have some downs. And I think when he came into the program, we were going through a kind of a down period. And Darren Bishop was an incredible leader internally to help turn the program back around in the right direction, get it directed towards where we wanted to go and internally uh, direct the team. He was an incredible leader and we needed that leadership. So it came from within him. North Central started off the 1990s with runner up finishes at the National Cross Country Meet in 1990 and 1991. But going into Darren Bishop's senior year, he was determined to bring North Central back to where they belonged, the winner's circle. But Darren Bishop took the team and at the beginning of the year, he said, he said, I'm one. All I need is four more. I don't care who joins me. He said that statement to the team. He was just a dynamic leader and took control of the team. North Central's fall would have its challenges with many of the team's returning runners getting injured. But the team found a way to prevail in cold and snowy conditions in New York to win the national championship by 30. This gave North Central their first national championship of the decade. And this team built a strong foundation for the next year. Oh boy, they, they, they set themselves up in 1993. That team had the knowing beyond the knowing. There was just no doubt in anybody's mind. They were that powerful, you know, and confident in themselves, but they evolved to that point and they deserve to be in the center, center stage. Bill Jackson said, when you get a team like that, you want to become an invisible coach. All I did and all we did is drive them to the meets and I tried to stay away as much as possible. I didn't want to interfere and over coach, let them take the leadership and coach themselves. Obviously, if they're off track for something, you're going to, you're going to help them but they didn't need me to give them any motivation or inspiration. They didn't need any of that. They had developed it through years of experience to get to that point, and they scored 32 points in the national championship. That 1993 national championship team that won with a national record of 32 that still stands to this day had Dan Meyer, the individual national champion, John Weigel, runner-up, Brian Hens, fifth, and Jim Dickerson, sixth. Dan Meyer had broken away from the rest of Division Three earlier in 1993 by winning the 5,000 and 10,000 meters at the Outdoor Track Championship. It would be his senior year that he would solidify himself as one of the best collegiate runners in the entire country, regardless of division. He would run 759 for 3,000 meters and 1353 for 5,000 meters indoors, which would have ranked him in the top six in both events at the Division I National Meet. He would finish off his senior year collecting three individual national titles between indoor and outdoor track. Talent is vital for success, but it takes more than talent to reach the top. It comes from within. Dan Meyer had that spiritual foundation that of values and virtues and characteristics that helped him to be the best that he could be. He came from New Holstein, Wisconsin, and I can't remember if it was a 440 high school miler or a 942 miler, but it wasn't anything that jumped out at you. I did not expect him to be that good. And he kind of came to North Central College, I think by accident, because Marcy Thurwalker, who was our women's coach at the time, was from Wisconsin, said, hey, I know this, the guy up there, New Holstein, and he might be interested in North Central. But when he came in here, I mean, he was dedicated. He would go out for long runs and one particular workout that we do, Four Lakes workout, and I couldn't follow the whole workout because they're out running a hill and everything else. And they'd come back. Guys would say, well, Dan Meyer stayed up with it. I can't remember who, but one of some of our better athletes. Dan Meyer stayed with him. And I honest to God thought, well, what's wrong with this athlete? He must be sick. He must be, you know, tired. Something's wrong. I didn't give Dan Meyer any credit. And eventually I began to realize that he had this internal drive that anything and everything he did was full out. 
And when he would run, he's like a Craig Virgin. When he would run, I mean, he would actually froth at the mouth when he's out running. He did workouts that I didn't even know he was doing. I mean, we would have a, a hard workout on a, on a Wednesday at Blackwell Forest Preserve. And then I found out later, hey, Dan Meyer and John Weigel and Jim Dickerson and Brian Hentz, they're doing another workout on Thursday. But he had this inside of him that I couldn't put there. It was just there. And it wasn't me. And it wasn't our workouts. In my opinion, it was this spiritual dimension that he had of the values that make up great character. So that's what I think he had uh, that helped set him apart. And it's rare that you find somebody that dedicated. Now, what you want is somebody that's confident along with it. You don't want somebody to come along and put pressure on himself and say, my whole self-worth is based on how fast I run. And if I don't, then they're putting pressure on themselves. They're outcome oriented. You want somebody that just enjoys working hard and seeing themselves get better. But I think he just wanted to be the best that he could be. And that was just part of his nature. You know, whatever he did, it was going to be as good as it could be. He just became top of the mountain, you know, and, and, and a great inspiration. And luckily, we had enough people that could watch him uh, and his work ethic and what he did. And we have a big brother system here, and we always find these are guys that we feel like are internal leaders that have the right characteristics, the right values that we want to pass on. And we give them a little brother a freshman coming in that we want to adhere to and learn from the big brother. And so that association with one another really has a lasting positive effect. Absolutely. No question. We don't leave that. We didn't ever left that to accident. Try to room people and on trips. We put, you know, an, an older athlete person that had the knowing with somebody that's younger, might be a little bit more insecure, not as confident because we knew the older athlete is going to pass on confidence onto other people, just vicariously onto other people. So it's who you surround yourself with. And if you lose those internal leaders, you don't have enough of them, you can lose a generation of, of, of athletes very, very quickly. So we've been fortunate that we've always had young guys coming along that learn from older guys. The next North Central leader, was an athlete that had seen what it takes to not only be a great runner and competitor, but a teammate who only wants to see you succeed. When John Weigel was a freshman, uh, John was struggling in the 5,000 meters and Darren Bishop and Dan Meyer helped him get through the 5,000 meters. They're running side by side in the 5,000 meters. In the last lap, they said, you come up. It's a conference meet right out here. You win it. They let him win. And John Weigel never forgot how good a big brother Dan Meyer was to him. So the next year, John Weigel is right behind Dan Meyer, and he's elated Dan Meyer wins uh, because of what he did to him or what he meant to him. So John Weigel gets second. The next year, we're at Lehigh University, and in the race, John gets out not very fast, in bad position, gets in a hole. So he gets second two years in a row. Uh, all this time, you got Matt Brill, who's a part of the program watching this going on. John Waggle is Matt Brill's big brother. 1995, John Waggle is winning and struggling. And right behind him is Matt Brill. And he's got his hands in the air like this. He's not happy about getting second. He's happy about his teammate winning the national championship when he could have won it, maybe, the year before, but he got second. He could have won it the year before, but he got second, okay? And remembering what his big brother did for him. So he was there, okay, helping his big brother, John Waggle, to win a national title. And I'm telling you this, I'll say this, uh, he could have easily passed uh, John Weigel that day. He wouldn't do it because of pride. So you could, can you imagine you could be the national champion, but I'm not going to pass a teammate because this guy has done so much for me and has helped me for all these years I've been here. So 
I am happy that John Waggle finally gets a chance to win. Then the next year, and I'm telling you, as sure as I can remember, that's the only race that he won all year because there was a great runner from uh, Augustana that was supposed to win it. It was held at Augustana College. I can't pronounce his last name. He's from a foreign country. I can't pronounce his name, but he was supposed to win it and primed as the, the champion. Matt Brill was not favored to win at all. In fact, Matt Brill didn't win anything all year long. But at the national championship in the middle of the race, it was a real windy day. He takes off and that instruction came from Ken Popejoy. Ken Popejoy told him, in the middle of the race, I want you to take, I think he said 20 quick steps in the middle of the race when nobody's expecting it. Take off. He did that and it stunned everybody else. And then he continued to, to go and he ended up winning the race. Matt Brill ended up winning the national title. And I think it was the first race he ever won that year. 1994 through 1996 saw North Central finish runner up all three of those years. Going into 1997, Mount Union was the favorite to win the national title, having four great season runners on their team. But the beauty of cross country is that it takes five or even sometimes seven runners to win a national championship. That was the year that Mount Union had four in the top 16. And we won the national title, not because of five, but because of seven. Our sixth and seventh men beat Mount Union's fifth man. So we won because of seven runners. And that's something not always understood. They say five people score in cross country. Well, that year, those sixth and seventh, without them, we would not have won the national title. I think we won that year because we had enough talent and that Mount Union did not have a strong enough fifth runner. We had struggles and problems throughout the year. We didn't have good chemistry. We didn't have good team dynamics. We didn't have good co culture. I couldn't put it together. I couldn't orchestrate it. We won the national title. And I pulled the team into the Myrna Field House in a classroom where we would meet on Mondays. And I said, I want you to know, I'm very proud of you. You won the national title to the outside world. You were a great team, but I have to be open and honest with you. We were not a great team. This is not a great team. We did not have the values, virtues, characteristics that make up a great team to be the best we could be. We could have been far better had we had these other values. I said, we only won because we had more talent than everyone else. And that was a hard thing to say. We won the national title and I'm telling them they're not a great team. So it's not based on winning, it's based on being the best that you can be with your talent. We've had great teams that have not won national titles. So it's not whether you win a national title or not, it's how good you do and how much you progress with what you've got individually and collectively. That was hard for me to say, to tell a team, you're not a great team. They weren't a great team. I'd been lying. They were talented and they won a national title, but we could have been far better. We did not demonstrate these things that I like to talk about. So I believe they soaked that up and realized they were missing something that was the internal glue, the internal passion. It was a special athlete on that team who would take a positive mental and spiritual belief to help change the team going forward. I used to have a numbering system. I'd say every day, put down the number you are before practice. And then I want you to put at the end of the workout whether what you felt like in the middle. Okay, are you one to begin with? And then what are you at the middle of the workout and what did you feel like at the end? And I thought this is gonna help the athlete take a sense of ownership and be able to understand what to do during the workout to make adjustments for himself. I said, the best coach you can ever have is yourself. But I found something strangely happening. Eric Diekman at the time, but Eric Taylor eventually explained it to me because he had a broken foot. I said, Eric, how in the world can you be a one every time? You're putting on the chart, you're a one. That means you're feeling perfect. You got a broken foot. He said, Al, he got my attention. He said, Al, my brain's not broken. My head's not broken. He said, every night before I go to sleep, 
they want to put a pin in my foot. He said, I send little workmen with hard hats down my head, through my body, into my foot to heal it. He never got an operation. He never had pins put in his foot. The next year, at the beginning of the year, he said this to me. He said, Al, everybody's always told me I'm too big to run cross country. I'm going to prove them wrong. Quote, out on the course, and we heard this. And it's clear, Eric Diekman has just won the national title. Eric Diekman got 16th at the regionals. We thought, oh my God. We gave out the wrong numbers. I think that's the only cross country race he maybe ever won was the national championship. With Eric Diekman, now Eric Taylor, winning the individual national championship, North Central held off a tough Calvin team to win back-to-back -back national team titles. Going into 1999, North Central was looking to win their third straight and close the decade out on top. And we were at Oshkosh, it's a fast, flat course, and we were back for a while and then, oh my gosh. And I asked what the mile time was, and I think they went out at something like the other teams, 420, something like that. Okay, they're out way, way, way over their skis. And our guys ran the right race, came up, came up, came up, and Colin Young came out of the well, Tim McCoskey came out of the well, and our guys came out of the well to to uh, win that race. But we were we were back early in that race because you had to get out fast, and if you get out too fast, I think it, you can get over your skis and and run into oxygen debt and, and, and pay for it the last part of the race. Winning the national championship in 1999 gave North Central five cross country titles in the 1990s. In the 25 years from 1975 to 1999, North Central won 12 national titles, were runner up 11 times, third once, and outside the top five just once as well. North Central was also having success on the track winning two outdoor track titles in 1994 and 1998. On those great track teams in the 1990s, they had the following national champions and 95 All-American honors between indoor and outdoor track across all event areas. Tune into the fifth segment of the documentary series to see how North Central handled the beginning of the 21st century.